Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Sports podcast series. Now, our first episode is pre-recorded due to the coronavirus outbreak, but moving forwards, all episodes will be filmed and available across official Next Gen Sports platforms. Throughout this series, we'll be speaking to several Next Gen Sports clients and other industry leaders within the sports and business sectors. Our first episode, we take a deeper look into the psychological effects and the mindset of the elite individuals who have suffered serious injuries and how they've overcome their personal adversity. We start by speaking to a new client with Next Gen Sports Solutions, Chloe Lloyd, who this season made her return to football after just over 12 months out due to an ACL injury. Chloe was at Yeovil Town in the Women's Super League when she first did her ACL rupture. So today, thank you for joining us, Chloe, and I hope you're doing well during the self-isolation period. My first question to you is, can you talk us through every single emotion that you experienced during the period of you first doing your ACL to the session that you are coming back into full contact training? sort of the extent of it um i thought it was just a uh, like little i don't know ligament damage just a little bit until i had my x-ray um and then found out that the the type of fracture i had done uh, there was 75 percent chance i'd done my acl i think from that moment i was just in tears like absolutely devastated like i didn't really want to tell my coach until like I, I officially knew um obviously I was waiting for my scan about two weeks after that so I had to wait two weeks not knowing if I'd actually done my ACL which was that was quite like frustrating I guess because I was trying to figure it out myself in a way but obviously I wasn't going to know until the scan results came back and I remember when they did come back my dad had to tell me like over the phone that they had rung him that he'd rung me and he said that was the that was the hardest thing he'd ever had to do was, was tell me that and like I, I can imagine myself as soon as I found out I was like again like just in tears devastated gutted you, you can't even put into words like um how how you're feeling she's think you've got such a daily routine of training maybe going to uni training just, just constant football in your life and then that is just taken away from you like straight away um and then after that i'd say my mindset sort of flipped um i went into a stage where i knew a lot about the injury anyway um studying snc in uni i knew how important it was to get the rehab right um and a couple of my teammates were going through the same thing um so i kind of just yeah flipped my emotions into let's get it sorted let's get it like fixed she was definitely you know fixable i just had to be really careful my rehab and be patient i think that's the main the main focus throughout the whole process i knew it was going to be nine to twelve months that's that's the that's the time frame you come back before that there's no chance you were going to do it so patience and getting it right was was actually key and i think every week in a weird little way i was getting progress and it's just the little steps counting towards like the biggest steps so like you're running going onto the bike, being allowed to swim, like all these little things. So I think the initial, what I found out was really upsetting. After that, the only way was up. And then the day, obviously I found out I was going to be playing my first match. All of those emotions just went into one. And like, I just, before I was just about to step on the field, I got emotional again. So it was just like surreal. And then as soon as I stepped on the pitch, it was like, it's game day again, like back into football mode. So that's the only way I can explain it. Like every single emotion you, you think you would feel, you actually feel throughout every single day. So, yeah. Okay. So the the time when you did your ACL, this was during a game, right? Yeah, it so, was so, yeah, during a game. So from, from you doing your ACL during the game to your first full contact training session back, how long is that period for you? probably 10 months so 10 months nine and a half, ten months yeah 
so when, um, without sort of giving you too many nightmares, the, how, how did it happen? So was it, so it, it wasn't an impact injury, was it? Um, no, it's a bit of a strange one. So usually it happens during non-contact, which technically it was. So I was about 20 minutes into a game. I got to change direction. And as I'd gone to plant my foot, I kind of had a little night in the back, which was a little bit unexpected. Okay. I've had a little bit extra force on my knee, and I felt dislocation happen. I think from that point then, I, I kind of knew something that wasn't supposed to happen that actually happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was... It was yeah, like, so, I, I can't even explain. The, it wasn't even pain. It was just more... It didn't feel right. Okay, so from you suffering the injury, so essentially from you laying on the pitch injured to you getting to hospital, did you go straight to hospital sort of mid? Yes. So how, yes. Long, how long was that? How long was that process? Though? Like half an hour, an hour? Um, yeah, so about an hour. What's going through your head during that hour? Um, I'm just staring at my knee, hoping that it's not the ACL. Um, I kind of thought it was my MCL just from where, like, I kind of know the structure of my knee. I kind of know what people felt, mm. um, like when, when they did it before, like people used to say, oh, if you feel a pop, it's, it's your ACL, but I didn't feel a pop. So like, I was a little bit, um, apprehensive, should we say, I, I wasn't really sure. I, something definitely wasn't right. I knew that, like, I could barely put any weight on, on my foot, on, on any part of my right side, really, on my right leg. Um, I was just sitting there, just nervous, really waiting for the answers. And as soon as I found out the type of fracture I had done, obviously, I knew it was a fracture, first of all, which I knew that was going to be six to eight weeks. Also, when she said the type of fracture I'd done is a high chance of ACL, oh, my God, my heart broke. I was... Like, not, not even officially knowing, but there's a 75% chance straight away. I was like, I think I've done it. Okay. So, when your dad got the call from the specialist, that sort of five minute period from your dad sort of breaking the news to you, what's going through your head then? I... Is that, is that when sort of the motivation kicks in to overcome it or are you sort of at an all-time low at that point? I would say on that day, I was sort of coming to terms with it's official, like I've done it. I think the next day, straight away, I messaged everybody I knew, pretty much who had anything to do with physiotherapy, massage. Straight away, I was like, I've done my ACL, what do I do now? And little did I know, you can actually do quite a lot before you have your operation and then the more successful your operation is after. So I'd say, obviously, after swelling had gone down and my knee was kind of like not feeling normal, but, you know, like I had good range, then I was straight in the gym. Like I was allowed on the bike. I was allowed to do all linear stuff, just no lateral stuff, no running, no jumping, just because I had no ligament to keep my knee in place. Mm. So as soon as I was back in the gym, it was weirdly like I was kind of back to normal, but not quite kicking a ball. Um, I know I have to wait a little time for that, but um, you'd be surprised how much you can actually do without the ACL. Don't be wrong, you can't play football, which is yeah, which is what I wanted. But I, I was in the gym, like I, I could do a lot of things, which kept me going, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So the specialist calling your dad to your operation date, what's the time frame of that? Um, I had to wait two months for my operation, which is quick compared to most people who go on NHS. However, it's not as quick as people, you know, who are in the pro game. They yeah. probably get it the next day. Um, in a weird old way, I was kind of glad that it was. I had two months, because I had two months to, you know, rehab it and make my hamstrings and my quads super strong for when, you know, I had the operation where I was quite limited for probably, I'd say, two months, especially just, just with, with range of motion. Um, yeah. I, I, I was glad, even though it added two months extra to my rehab time, 
I needed those two months to just get my legs super strong because I was having a hamstring graft. I needed my hamstring to be super strong mm. ready for, for the operation, really. So two months then before you've even got an operation, that's, yeah. that's like one-fifth of a season. That's, that's quite scary when you think of, yeah. um, like from a football's perspective. Yeah, it's a lot. So you're almost out for pretty much. It's not just the nine to twelve months. You know, it's it's the waiting time for the operation yeah, yeah. for that as well. Like it's it's a lot to wait for before you actually even have the operation. Yeah. Okay. So um, after your operation date, the the rehab stage after that. How um, how difficult is that period? Is that the hardest bit? Do you think, or is that the easiest bit? parts although you're on crutches and you're quite limited the, your rehab time from say when you have your operation date to three months which is when i was allowed to go on a bike mm. that was weirdly quick however from three months to six months was long because i was waiting to run at six months and then from six months to nine months and onwards that was when i was getting closer and closer to playing and i think the hardest part was the end um from nine months to 11 and a half when I returned that was the longest time because in, in my head I was ready but it just wasn't I wasn't going to risk it going in too early I just had to see how it was feeling in like game scenarios how would it feel in a tackle um so I practiced all these things week in week out, week out with um Hillary from the FAW and Ewan from uh, Yeovil honestly like it, it was like a bible I had to do it every single day repeat 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 just to see how it felt and if it didn't feel right I wasn't ready but I wasn't going to throw myself in after you know waiting nearly a year and, and over over a year to return yeah okay so during sort of a rehab stage at what point do you start to come to terms with right the there is light at the end of a tunnel player should have a clear plan of like each time frame what's going to happen and like I did I knew right I had rehab before my operation then I had the op at three months we'll reevaluate. we'll have some tests we'll see if you're ready for the bike if you're not we'll have to wait then we'll rehab it again six months are you ready to run we'll do a test no you're not okay we'll wait nine months are you ready for contact yeah okay great let's move it on are you ready for change of direction all these all these things it's just like step by step month by month test by test constant like that's how it should be and my and that's how mine was and i'm really grateful that mine was that way however i don't feel it is like that for people i feel like especially ones who are maybe on on the nhs system they, they're rehabbed until they can do day-to-day -day stuff. They're not rehabbed until they, they're allowed to return to play, which is completely different. Yeah, okay. So, the first training session back or the first game back, what's your mindset? Did you have any doubts? Um, did you have, Were you reluctant to go into tackles? Um, I wasn't reluctant, no. Um, loads of people say you might be nervous going into your first tackle. I wasn't. Um, I think that's because I, I, I waited longer, maybe than I should have, to return. I, like eleven and a half was, you know, it was almost a year. Most people will return on nine, maybe ten. So I waited that extra month to six weeks to get used to a game scenario. So I was, I was in training back, back to normal, doing classes, um, doing classes, doing uh, training games, one v one situations, possession. Everything that was changing direction, tackles, you know, physical contact, I was used to it. So when it came to a game, it was just natural. Yeah, okay. So you mentioned Ewan and the FAW. How important is it having sort of the right support system around you? Or the right people around I, you? I, to be honest, I think it's the key to having a successful rehab. Um, no matter how much you think you know about the injury, you probably don't know a lot. Um, to have such two strong
strong, you know, physios and ST coaches who knew so much about the injury and gave me so much information. It was literally down to me to just do it and do it right, which I trusted myself. I trusted the process and I trusted what they were what they were telling me. And if I didn't, I questioned it. Um, and that was because I knew a lot about the injury. People who don't know a lot about it, what I would say is get researching, like see what you have to do before, during, after, and get in touch with people because the more people that are around you, the more people that can help you, the more successful your rehab will be. Yeah, absolutely. Did you ever feel like you were hung out to dry by any, any individuals or or anyone within sort of women's sport during this process? Or left on your own, even not just hung out to dry, sort of isolated? Um, I wouldn't say left to dry. I, I think the the rehab process is, it's, it can be quite lonely. Um, you, you're doing it on your own all the time. You don't have your teammates around you doing the same as what you're doing. Um, you might be in the same gym environment as them, but you're on a completely different programme to what they are. Um, it can get quite lonely, but I think for me, I was so determined to, to get back. It made me realise how much I wanted to play. I think when, when I did do my injury, I was in such a happy place, but I also physically and mentally quite drained, so that, that might be part of the reason why I did do it. Um, Going back to the rehab, then, like I said, it, like it is lonely, and it's just down to you, really. Like as long as you surround yourself with your family and, and your friends, it you get through it absolutely fine. Um, maybe coaches and you know other staff may may want to reevaluate how if they have any players who are in that situation, how they go about it because you know, like I said, it's lonely. You're not in the team. You're not in the starting lineup. You're not playing at all. But yet you still want to be part of the squad, so that would be my only my only tip really. Okay. Were there any stages during your rehab where you thought, you know what, I can't do this or any sort of lacking motivation? Um I would say not I can't do this more this is becoming uh long and frustrating I would say at the six months mark um so technically I was sort of eight months into my rehab as well as my two months before and then six months during so at the six months mark is where you start to run and that's when you really kick off the rest of your rehab um there's, there's a few little tests you have to do before you have to, you know you, you're allowed to to run you have to make sure your knee's ready you have to make sure your strength is there even on both sides um, so I was doing a few tests and I, I wasn't getting them right. Um, my knee just didn't want it. Didn't want to play ball, as we say. So I repeated the test a number of times, and Hillary wasn't going to let me run until I passed that test. And I kept failing and kept failing. I was getting so frustrated because I knew I was ready to run, but there was just this one test that was stopping me from doing it. So I had to just slightly change my rehab plan a little bit just to you know, help me out with the test. Um, eventually I passed it, but that was three weeks after. So I was six months and three weeks late running compared to your normal plan. But I didn't like, you know, slow my rehab down or, any, down or anything, but I just had to make sure I was ready because if I started running and it was too early and the one little blip and then you're back another month. So it's important to get it right. Okay. So you mentioned sort of a main thing is about doing your homework and getting the right people around you. If you were to give yeah. one tip to anyone, any female athlete, either if they're injured or they're not injured, what would that advice be? Um, get private insurance. Um, a lot of people don't have it. Um, it's you, you don't realise how much you need it until you've, you've done an injury like that. Mm. Um, I was... I was lucky I had it. I still have to wait for my operation. However, if I didn't have it, and I know people who haven't had it, they've had to wait 18 months just for an operation. So, yeah. get private insurance. You, you are going to be paying for it, but, but you're paying so that you can get your operation done quicker and everything else done quicker. Um, it's so, so important. I think I, I didn't realise it until I did my ACL. Yeah. 
the way that I see private medical insurance is it's it's like an investment into your own career. Yeah, um, definitely. Okay. Um, I am obsessed with like psychology and mindset and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to reach out to you in terms of finding out what you went through, especially during the ACL injury. I've got one final question and I know it's a bit of a weird yeah. question and there's probably no answer to it, but do you feel that if, for example, you'd have had private health care or you would have done anything different or even if you wouldn't have got injured at the time that you did, do you think your career would have been different? Um, possibly, yeah. Actually, yeah, I do. Um, I was playing in the Super League with Yeovil. I was, I had probably eight or nine appearances. Um, and then obviously after I did my injury, I was out for the rest of that season. I was out of missing it. Like I was not playing in Super League games, which are every single game is a big game don't get me wrong when I did my injury I was there but it's just not the same as playing um, when you are playing you get your name up there you know you're helping the team win you're helping the team you're doing your bit when you're injured you're not you're, you're nowhere near that starting line up you're okay you are in with the squad but you're not at the same time um, it definitely changed it um, but I'm, I'm definitely in a happier and you know, better place right now just from going through that process. I'm definitely stronger mentally and physically. Chloe, you have such an amazing story in regards to what you've overcome in the last 12 to 18 months. Anyone that does overcome an ACL injury, you know, you have to take your hats off too. So thank you very much for coming on and speaking to us about your story. No problem. Thank you. Keep your eyes out for future podcasts by Next Gen Sports Solutions as we take a deeper look into players' lives and what goes on behind the scenes as we carry on speaking to Next Gen Sports clients and industry leaders within the sports and business sector.